come to Christ, you test the goodness of the Lord, and yet you start walking behind. It makes me angry. It makes me feel filled with so much anger, not against the person, but against the idea that why can't you just settle in Christ Jesus? Why can't you, like, you want to, I sometimes feel like even slapping someone. Asking them, why did you have to go out of the of 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 the of the of the border? Why did you even uh, go out of your position? Because basically, it's going out of your position. Even when Jesus the seventy left, I don't think Jesus was was happy with that. Even to ask Peter, will you also leave? It was in a way like, okay, I don't care anymore. Like, if you want to 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 stay by me. You will reap the fruits of Jesus Christ. You will, because I'm obligated. Him as Jesus Christ is obligated to do to protect those who are in his territory. So even when he asked Peter, will you also go away? He was not happy. He was angry. So it is true. We also get angry when we see people who they have tested the goodness of the Lord. And then yet they go back to the world. And then the things that befall upon them, they are so bad. They, they, they are even worse than the way the first time they came. Worse than the way the first time they came. When they start talking, and the thing is, I don't know if it is blindness, I'm still praying for God to give me understanding over this. Because you will see someone, you're telling someone, you are, but don't you see that this is because you are suffering? Why don't you come back to Christ? Someone tell you, oh no, I dreamt, I don't know, my former ex-wife, like this. But I say, no, you are the victim of your own circumstances. There's no dream. There is nothing that can hinder you if you chose to be in Christ Jesus. You are an enmity, what you are falling, and what is falling upon you, the world, your world is falling apart because of one thing. You have despised, and it is not, it is not a lie. Anyone who comes to Christ Jesus and, and backslides and goes back, he has despised God's masses. You have despised God's masses because you have tested. David said, come and test the goodness of the Lord. Come and test. You come and test it, and then you go back. You test it, and then you start going back to the things of this world. You tested it, and then you go back and starting to doubt and starting to and uh, to uh, walking in doubt. What is it? What is it that couldn't make you settle in Christ Jesus? What is it that you are looking for in the world? What is the what is the world going to give you? The world is going to give you sickness. The world is going to give you suffering. The world is going to give you every calamity that the world can give. Because we saw, even in Genesis, when the devil used Eve and Adam, what happened? He put them into shame. They were naked. It is the same thing that the devil is still doing today. He doesn't have any new tactics. No. No new tactics for the devil. You decide to backslide yes it is backslide because it is going back you decide to backslide you are once in the body of christ when you did not have when you you prayed god gave the answer god answered you through his mercies and then after he answered you you said lord enough this is enough enough of your masses enough of your righteousness i don't need it anymore let me know what i know let me do what i know how to do best you start jumping from here, start jumping from here, start jumping. Let me tell you a mystery of connection. There's a mystery of connection you need to understand. There's a blessing that follows in the spirit. That's why you see people, they can go from one corner to another corner of the town, but they want to go to a certain church. Why? Because they know that they are connected to the blessing in that church, in that fellowship. Blessings come from Christ Jesus, it is true. But the blessings have channels. Or else God would not have placed men of God all over. He would have placed men of God, one person in the whole world, like a pop the way it is. And all blessing to come through pop. But what did God do? He said that he has given efficiency to all apostles teachers why 
for the perfection. So you may go round, 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 round until where your heart has been ordained to be blessed. That's where you're going to be blessed. Otherwise, you are going to roam from this church to another church to another church to another. Everywhere you're going to, it is Christ Jesus who is blessing. It is very true. But your blessing is connected to even to that right pastor, even to that right evangelist who will meet you in the street and talk to you about Jesus. How many people in your life talk to you about Jesus, but no one convicts you? How many people have talked about the grace of God? But when someone speaks to you, your heart opens like, oh, wow, I never saw it this way. You think it is a mystery he spoke to you? It is not a mystery. It is because of connection, spiritual connection. Those are the things you stay somewhere, you see your life is opening up, you see things are open, and you go away and you start suffering, yet you are blind, you cannot see and come back. Why? Pride, ego, the things that are blocking us from walking into our blessings. Ego, pride, I cannot go back and ask for forgiveness. If God said honor should be given to whom he has given who are you saying I cannot go back to ask for forgiveness? You are willing to suffer. You are willing to suffer your generation just because of pride. It is of the devil. The devil will use you and put you into shame because the devil does not know how to use and exalt someone. No. Anyone who has ever been used, used by the devil, we have seen the end of him. It is what it is suffering and shame. The same man that Nebuchadnezzar saw, and he was used by God to see the fourth man. Nebuchadnezzar was a spiritual man who saw the fourth man. How could Nebuchadnezzar see a fourth man in the fire? How could he know the son of man? But it was the same Nebuchadnezzar who went to chew grass. After saying that this is the God that we are going to worship. And then what did he do? He told people that people should rule, should bow down to him. Or everyone should bow down to him. Why? Because of being blinded by the devil. We are children of God. Our prosperity, don't be lied. The hyena or the wolf will always attack a lonely zebra, will always attack a lonely sheep. Have you seen a sheep in fellowship being attacked? A sheep that is there are together with the others being attacked. No. The one who stays behind. The one who thinks, oh, I can pray alone. The one who thinks, oh, I don't need to go to church to, 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 to know Jesus. I can know Jesus on my own. I can read the Bible. It's just reading the Bible. It's a lie. God called us to fellowship. If you cannot have fellowship with your fellow man, how can you fellowship with God? There's no way you can fellowship with God. You don't know God. He say it, to, it is to love. If you don't love your brother, how can you say you love God? Oh, I am fellowshipping alone. You will fellowship alone from midnight to morning, from night to morning. But you are called to have fellowship with God, with fellowship with others. Remember, the ship that the devil, that the wolf attacks. The lonely sheep that the wolves attack. So, why am I saying this? It is true. Most people come when they need of something. It is not us who gives testimonies. No. No, someone should not say, oh, so and so prayed for me. Mama Ruch prayed for me. And this one, it is Jesus Christ who has healed you. But Jesus Christ does not come down as spirit to heal you. Even when he was coming to redeem, he gave dominion to man. Understand that it is man to pray for you, for you to be, for you to be healed. It is God to use man because dominion on earth has been given to man. So the quicker you understand your connection and you have spiritual discernment on fellowshipping, understanding where your blessings are, because he didn't say that blessing are stagnant. He said they will follow you as you go where. Where are you going that blessings will follow you? 
as you go to the place that he has ordained you to receive those blessings. Those blessings are normally ordained to be received at a certain position. That's why we are channels of blessing. The reason why I can see someone who understands can move from one corner of the church to other corner of the church in that city. You keep on saying, oh, it is far. When you wanted a testimony, was it far? When you were seeking Christ, was it far? But now because you have gained what you want, you think it is very far. I cannot go, it is very far. It is well. Continue saying it is far. By the time that the things are befalling upon you, that far place is where you are destined to be redeemed. It's where you are destined to be delivered. That place you think it is far. You have money to go to work. You don't say work is far. But on Sunday, that is the time you say it is far because you don't have love for Christ. That is the truth. There's no way you can go to work Every day, transport, morning, evening, morning. On Sunday, you say you don't have transport to go to church. It talks about your priorities. What are your priorities as a Christian? How do you see God? It talks about the value. How do you, how much do you value God? How much is your heart after God? You may think it's small. Oh, they will understand. I said that I will only be praying online, but I cannot go for the physical physical prayer fellowship. Ah, okay. You can go online prayers, but not for the physical fellowship. But when you wanted to, you had issues, you went all through the physical fellowship. But now you, you, you have fuel to go through all the town and do your errands. On Sunday, you cannot. How you keep God in your priorities is how you will also manifest him in your life. Because the way you behold God, God in your life, the way you be, you see, he's like a mirror, beholding him as we what? As we change from one glory to another glory. What are you beholding? You're beholding your job, you will be frustrated. You are beholding your family, you will be frustrated. You are beholding the fuel in your car, the little shillings that you have, you can't go to church, you're waiting for Monday to use the same money to go to, 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 to office with. You will always be working, yet other people are earning less money and they're building homes. You will start questioning yourself, where did I go wrong? It is blessing. Have discernment of blessing. Have discernment of how we get blessed. We are blessed through connections and channels. That is how, as children of God, we are blessed. Otherwise, I say again, God would only leave Pope to rule. He wouldn't keep ministers. He wouldn't call Apostle Philip all the way from Ghana to come to Kenya. Why? Because there are some people who God knows he has ordained and destiny that their blessing should be through Apostle Philip. Others who have not known him, they are still praying at this time, Lord, connect me to that man, connect me to that channel, connect me to the, oh, con they, they call them destiny helper. When you hear them praying, oh, destiny helper, destiny, destiny helper is not someone who will teach you to, to make money or who will give you a job. Destiny helper is one who will set your mind at liberty to understand how blessed you are. Those are the destiny helpers. The corruption in the church has made destiny helpers the one to help you with a visa to go to the U.S. The destiny helper is the one who is going to help you with money. Those are things of this world. Even the Muslims who don't believe in Jesus Christ are one of the richest people. You don't need Christ. You don't need Christ to, to understand that me, my blessing is supposed to be, to, 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 my destiny helper is the one to give me a job. No. You need Christ to be liberated in your mind that in everything that you do, you understand that your position is in Christ Jesus. Once you're in Christ Jesus, he is the source and centerpiece of everything in your life. Stop holding the job and letting go of Christ. Once you let go of Christ, even the job that you're holding will let, will let you go. Once you let go, these things that you're praying for oh, now and then you get them and you think that you're going 
and you think that you are satisfied. Satisfaction is not coming and going. Even Abraham, when he was called, he was told to leave his home. He went until Chaldean. He, stopped. he was called to go until Canaan. But what did he do? He went until Chaldean and he stopped. And even when you count his years, the years that he stopped at Chaldean, God did not count them. Why did God not count them? Because he wasted them. Actually, he was called to go to Canaan, not to Chaldea. When Abraham was called to go, he took Lot to go with him. Until he parted ways with Lot, that's when God visited him and told him, Abraham, walk ye perfect in the Lord. Why? Was he not the same Abraham who was called and he was in destruction in his home? But yet he was, he was never told to walk perfect until the time that he departed from Lord and told to walk perfect. The friends that we walk with, you are a friend with someone, yet you talk about your pastor. You are a friend with someone, yet the same friend is telling you against your church, is telling you against the pastor who is leading you. Where is your honor? If God has respected this man to stand on the altar, someone talking against this man, either you tell, let's pray for him. You can't, share, you can't turn away a soft word. Someone comes to you, oh, Apostle Philip, like this, Apostle, Apostle Philip has done this, Apostle Philip has done this. Say, okay. It is true he has done it. He's also a human being. But the word that he preaches on the altar is ordained by God. Come, let us pray for him. But you entertain gossip. You entertain gossip. Then that gossip that you entertain, it alters your heart unconsciously. You start feeling heavy burden to go. Why? To go to church. You start feeling you can't because you are guilty. Your heart is condemning you because of the words that you spoke behind his back. The leaders in the church, Sister Karo Mama Rachel, you start gossiping about them behind their back, and then yet you're going again to stand and clap for them and say, and you think you're going to be blessed. Hypocrites. Such your heart. Such your heart. Walking in Christ Jesus. Is walking in righteousness. Are you walking in the righteousness that God has called you? If God has called you, obedience is better than sacrifice. True grace ministry doesn't need anyone's money. No. God who called true grace ministry is there to establish it or else he wouldn't have called it true grace ministry. If God has given a vision, he's there to establish it. It is not your money that you think make you think like, oh, because I sponsor this, I sponsor this. I will not go and I see and I will see how, how the pastor will go. I will not give and I see if these things will be bought. My friend, the churches of Jesus Christ, whether you give is for your own blessing. Whether you hold, it is also for your own goodness and bad. We are here to see Christ. We are here because we have a revelation. We are here because of the liberty that we have understood Christ has set us. We are here because we understand the blessing that God has blessed us in Christ Jesus through the ministry of true grace ministry. I am a living testimony of the of the of, the, uh, of true grace ministry. I am a living testimony of the blessing through uh, true grace ministry. I understand. I understand how God can use ministry to liberate us, how God can use ministry to bless us. So brethren, stand firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Stand firm where you have been called, making your calling for sure. That is what you are called to do. Stand. Otherwise, this thing of today you're in church, tomorrow you're not in church. Don't think that you, you, you think that it makes us suffer. We, we are not suffering. We are not suffering. That today you're in church, 
Today you're in prayers, tomorrow you're not in prayers, and then you come back again, and then you bring a again a, a prayer request. We will pray for you. Our work, we have been called by Jesus Christ to pray. Our work, we have been called by Jesus Christ to preach the truth, to preach. But one thing we are going to tell you, we are going to tell you the truth. I will tell you the truth. There's the things that you are befalling, the things that the, your world is falling apart. Scripture cannot be broken. It is your own lust that lured you into problems. It is your own lust that lured you to fall away. Don't say it is someone so and so, you a new creation. At this time, you're supposed to have grown, not to even be blaming other people for your befallings. But look at you, three years down the line, because you decide to go away, you're still blaming other people for your befalling. You're blaming a witch in your village lack of understanding lack of liberation of the mind and you know why they come and tell you oh maybe i have dreamt it is so and so uh, 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 doing this and this it is so so and so my my aunt in the village does it is because they listen to they listen to those fake prophecies those prophecies that they tell them oh you know what this something someone in your village is the one doing it. then they bring it to you oh mama ruth i have dreamt that uh, it is um, um so and so in my will i say you've not dreamt you've been told by your certain prophet you've been told by the prophecy that you go and that your life uh, is so and so who is hurting your life or so and so who is affecting you it's a lie it is your own lustful nature your lust is the one that you should take charge not your witch in the village not your auntie in the village stop blaming your aunt in fact repent for blaming your aunt repent for blaming your father it is your own lustful nature. You thought you were enough because God has answered you. You thought you are good because God has answered you. Now where is it? It is because you lost your position. We are called to be in the positions of Christ. Psalms 37, 25 said, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous for second, nor his seed baking bread. The question is, if you consider yourself righteous, if you once tested the goodness of the Lord, why are you begging for bread? Why are you seeing that you have been forsaken? Since I have been young and I am now old, I have never seen that. And it is true. Although it is the testimony of David, I have come to live it. I have come to testify of it. I have never seen the righteous in their position being forsaken never god will always bring a solution god will always it doesn't matter he will never be let he is an on time perfect timing god you may weep for the night but joy comes in the morning Weeping may endure for a night. He did not say that you as a righteous, you will endure weeping every day. No. Trust in the word of God. Trust on what he has said. Hold on to the garment. Hold on to the hem of Jesus Christ. It is in Christ Jesus where we receive virtues. It is in fellowship where we receive virtues every day. Just as the food that we eat, you will eat in the morning. You will eat in the afternoon, you will eat in the night. Yet in the night, even you can wake up and eat again be between your sleeps. Where is, why, why are you eating all that food? You, where is your strength being used? You're eating food in the morning, afternoon, and evening. Yet the virtues of your strength that comes from the word of God, you're not replenishing it through the meditation of the word, through fellowshipping. Okay, you cannot meditate, it's okay. We have fellowship every morning. You cannot also come for fellowship. You come once, you get your testimony, you go. After three months, you come back again. We will pray for you because it is Jesus who has mercies. It is Jesus who heals. It is Jesus who has called us to pray for you. We will pray for you and we will tell you the truth. You will not blame your auntie in the village in front of me, never. And it is your own lustful nature that kicked you out now brethren let's hold our ears you say those who have ears 
let them hear what the Lord says. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging for bread. That is the word that the Lord is giving you. Hold on to the helm of Jesus Christ. Hold on to your position of Jesus Christ. We who are in Christ Jesus, our source of life, our source of everything is found in Jesus Christ. This is where we grow. This is where we walk from one glory to another glory. Brethren, I am a testimony of Jesus Christ. I have seen how Jesus Christ has changed me. Not only changed my physical path, but changed my mind, the way I think. The liberation that I've received in Christ Jesus, I pray that all of you may receive it. But it is through dwelling in him. It is through meditation in him. I remember one day Mama Rachel asked me, Mama Ruth, what is it that you do? Is it that you pray too much? Is it that you study too much? I told him no. It is because I have understood the love of God. Because if he loves me, then I will love him. And if I will love him, of course, I will be meditating on his word. I will be praying because it gives me joy. It gives me fellowship. It gives me that satisfaction. When I know that the person who loves me most has protected me, has taken care of me, has watched over me all day. Let me go to his bosom and tell him, Father, thank you. Let me go to his bosom and read his love letter. Let me fulfill the joy by reading the love letter that he has sent it to me. Brethren, hold on to the hem of Jesus Christ. He is the only place of your refuge. Do not be tempted. The devil is the one that wants to snare you, to take you away, to kill, to destroy. And you know what? The fruit of the devil is shame. Hold on to Christ Jesus. There is no shame. Hold on to Christ Jesus. There is no forsaking. Hold on to Christ Jesus. There is fullness of joy and peace. I bless you with the blessings of Christ in Jesus.